our master, Antonio Vivaldi, was born on March 4th, 1678, in Venice, and was baptized in this church, San Giovanni in Bragora. It is said that Antonio almost died shortly after his birth as a result of a respiratory illness. He was quickly baptized, and the priest wanted to administer the last rites, but the child miraculously survived. Vivaldi suffered from this respiratory illness his entire life. He was often heard coughing and gasping for air. Antonio was the oldest of nine children. The family was very religious, and very poor, and lived in one of these houses next to the church. Vivaldi's father was a violinist who played in St. Mark's Basilica. He wanted his eldest son to become a musician too and taught him to play the violin. But first, Antonio had to become a priest. His father knew that no ordinary citizen would ever have any sort of career without the protection and support of the nobility and the church. Our master was 18 the first time he played the violin in public at St. Mark's Basilica. A few years later, Vivaldi was ordained into the priesthood. He was often seen dressed in the black ascetic robes of the Catholic priest. But because of his poor health, he never actually worked as a priest. Vivaldi's dream was music. He lived only for music. He wanted to become the greatest and most famous violinist in Europe. He wanted to compose sonatas, concertos, oratorios, and operas. On September 1st, 1703, Vivaldi came to us as a music professor at the musical seminary of the Ospedale della Pietà. He was 25 years old. La Pietà was an orphanage located a few minutes away from St. Mark's Square and Doge's Palace. This drawing shows the Ospedale della Pietà to the right of the Santa Maria della Pietà Church. At the orphanage, we were educated by priests and nuns. There were several hundred of us young girls. Some came here as children abandoned by their parents who were too poor to feed them. Others, from wealthy families, simply came to study music and learn to play musical instruments. The most talented among us became Vivaldi's pupils. He taught us composition and to play the concertos he wrote. His contract stipulated that he had to compose two concertos every month and to rehearse them with us. We then played them in public. We were a girls' orchestra. Vivaldi was proud of us and we of him. A French visitor told us that our orchestra was better than the one of the Paris Opera House.
This engraving is considered to be a portrait of Vivaldi. It was made by Lacave, a Frenchman who lived in Amsterdam, where Vivaldi had his partitions printed. The portrait doesn't look much like Vivaldi as we knew him. We often saw our master write his notes of music with frightful and feverish speed. Sometimes he quickly erased what he didn't like and would then start writing again just as quickly. Once he told us that he often stayed up all night composing. The next morning he'd come to La Pietà with his notes and we would rehearse the new work. Vivaldi composed most of his concertos for the violin, which he loved so much. He often played his new compositions himself, and sometimes even allowed himself to improvise. Our master developed the idea of Torelli and Albinoni, which was to place the soloist in front of the orchestra and to allow him or her to express their technical prowess and musical qualities. A German visitor who had seen and listened to Vivaldi in a public concert wrote that Vivaldi played the violin with incredible speed and that he'd never heard anything like it and would have found it impossible to believe if he hadn't seen and heard it for himself. At the time, our dear city of Venice was the European capital of music. Tourists from all over Europe came to the city's concerts and operas. Music was a celebration that never ended, especially during the carnival. For six months, people lived in the feverish expectation of the carnival, when anything was possible and everything was allowed.
The music of our beloved master was played more and more frequently in our city. His name as a virtuoso of the violin and composer soon became known throughout Italy and then throughout all of Europe. Vivaldi was now often on the road, but he always came back to La Pietà with new sonatas and new concertos. We rehearsed them with him and played them in public. We were always so happy to see him and to work with him again each time he came back. Vivaldi's music always held new surprises for us. It appeared before us every morning like the sun rising in the sky. Each time we received it as a gift and a revelation.
In the 18th century, Venice was a libertine city in terms of its moors, a kind of erotic paradise. The city was full of courtesans, and most couples lived in open relationships. Both husbands and wives often had love affairs, known to all, seen by all, especially by their respective spouses. Venice was then the happiest city in the world. Some of the girls of our orphanage came from the aristocracy and the bourgeoisie. Among them were illegitimate girls who had been repudiated by their families and who had spent their childhood in monasteries. In 1713, at age 35, Vivaldi composed his first opera. That same year, he started a career as a theater manager. He staged his own operas that he directed himself. He now called himself an opera entrepreneur. In 1725, at age 47, Vivaldi met a young cantatrice, Anna Giraud, of French origin who was 30 years younger than he. She accompanied him for the rest of his life. A few years later, he appointed her prima donna assoluta, the lead cantatrice in his operas. They had become inseparable. Wherever Vivaldi went, Anna Giraud went too. But our master was still officially a priest. The church, in any event, did not look fondly upon this relationship. While working on his operas, he continued to compose religious works for the church and for our Pietà.
Vivaldi was called the Red Priest because of his red hair. It is said that this oil painting is his portrait because of the tuft of red hair that can be seen underneath the man's wig. It seems like sooner or later, great artists are transformed into myths.
We didn't see our master between 1718 and 1722. Four long years. He was 40 years old and traveled from city to city. First in Italy, then throughout Europe where he played his operas and oratorios. We learned that he had been invited to the courts of kings and emperors. It is said that this 1723 ink drawing by Pier Leone Ghezzi, when our master was 45, is the only true portrait of Vivaldi. But it looks as much like a caricature as a true portrait. It's Vivaldi, and it's not Vivaldi. He seemed to us to be an impatient and ambitious man, sure of himself, knowing what he wanted, but others found him to the contrary, fearful and shy. Vivaldi had many admirers in our city, but also many enemies.
Again, we did not see our master for several years. He always looked like he was running from something, from Venice, from the city of his birth. A persecuted being that traveled from city to city, from country to country. It started with Vivaldi losing the church's support. The public then turned its back on him, and his music was played less and less frequently. After his death, we learned that he had gone to Vienna to have his operas played. His companion, Anna Giraud, and her sister were with him. The Austrian emperor, Charles VI, had invited him to his court. But he died a few months after Vivaldi had arrived in Vienna. Our master thus lost his benefactor and protector. He very quickly became impoverished. Vivaldi died on July 27, 1741, from an internal burning and high fever. He was 63 years old. We learned later that our beloved master had been buried the day after his death in a common grave among the unknown in a pauper cemetery in Vienna. Antonio Vivaldi composed more than 600 concertos, nearly 90 sonatas, at least 45 operas, and more than 60 religious works. He forged the path from religious music to secular music. It is said that he transferred music from the churches to the concert halls. Vivaldi has delighted us with his music. We have grown up with it. It has accompanied us all through our lives. No one understood and represented Venice better than Vivaldi. For us, Vivaldi is Venice, and Venice is Vivaldi. <laughs>